Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening, depending on your time zone and depending on when you are watching this. It is Wednesday, the 19th of August, 2020, already halfway through most people's working week. I'm James Innes, and this is my YouTube show, The Jobs Guru. I'm delighted to see you here for today's episode. I extend a very warm welcome to all those who have subscribed since the last episode. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then please do think about subscribing so that you don't miss out on the next episode. In today's show, I'm going to be covering a question from one of my viewers, and next in the interview question series, we have another tough one. What don't you like about this line of work? That's the question I'm going to be tackling. If you have any comments or questions as you watch, then do please let me have them below in the comments section, and if you like what you see, then do please hit that YouTube thumbs up. So, on to that question from one of my viewers. Today's question has been sent in by Ben in Maidenhead. Dear James, I feel stuck in a rut in my job, but am I too old to embark on a new career? I've been working local media for most of my professional life, but feel I'd like to try something new. However, I'm 39. I'm not even sure what it is I'd like to do. Never mind embark on a career switch at my age. Am I living in cloud cuckoo land to think about starting afresh? Well, Ben, <laughs> in Maidenhead, Yes, I have to admit, you did make me chuckle there, saying, at my age, you're only 39. Um, I routinely assist people in their 40s and 50s looking to embark on a major change of direction. So let's put your age to one side. It's not an issue. Con let's concentrate on what you need to do to make this career change happen. Really? 39 and you think you're over the hill? I can't get over that. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I'm 44. Um, maybe I am over the hill. No, I don't think so. Firstly, you need to think long and hard about what you would actually like to be doing, what you feel you would be better suited to doing, and what would make you happy. Um, no, you're not living in cloud cuckoo land, as you say, to, to want to change, but you do, of course, have to be reasonably realistic as to, uh, you know, what is, with the experience you have, likely to be appropriate for you. Beyond that, you obviously need to be uh, able to position yourself carefully so that any potential employer or recruiter is able to, to look past the fact that you've spent two decades in a, in a different line of work, which evidently is going to be your biggest hurdle. And so they can see clearly how you would be able to apply what you have learned to a new challenge. So as to avoid uh, creating confusion in the reader's mind, you'd be well advised, I think, to declare your future career intentions in an appropriately, uh, appropriately phrased objective on your CV and elaborate on that in the cover letter. Um, so, no, not over the hill, not living in, I'm looking at your words again here, not living in cloud, cuckoo land, Ben, go for it. Now, I'm always open to interesting new questions from my viewers, so if you have a question, workplace, jobs, careers, or employment related, for me, then do please type it into that comment section below, and I may well feature it in a future episode of this show. And if I do, then one of my limited edition collector's item, Jobs Guru coffee mugs, will be yours. I know you want one, and you know you want one. Ooh, almost broke it there, sorry. Um, now, as well as heading up James in a stock group, I'm also the UK's best-selling careers author. And amongst my titles is the interview question and answer book. There we go. Handy copy. It is, of course, available in all good bookshops. Um, less battered copies should be available. This one's falling apart. I flicked through it so many times, uh, referring to things. Um, or if you'd like a signed copy from yours truly, then there's a link in the description of this video. Now, each Wednesday at the moment, I'm taking questions from that book and I'm looking at how to answer them. At the moment, from the chapter I entitled the top 25 tough questions, taking the heat. Today's question, what don't you like about this line of work? Now, similar questions include what aspects of your job would you change if you could? Um, I mean, there's many variations on that theme. Back to the question in hand. What don't you like about this line of work? Now, this is a loaded question, yeah? Designed, designed to talk you into disclosing positive, potentially negative information about your attitude to your work. The interviewer is trying to gain further insight into how suited you are to this line of work, and in particular, how suited you are to the, the vacancy for which you're applying. So, how to answer. Now, this can be a slippery question to answer, but it's not really that difficult to get right if you understand the meaning behind the question and are able to avoid various pitfalls. First of all, you're not going to get away with replying, uh, nothing at all. Everybody has some aspects of their work that they don't like, you know, or at least like less than other parts. Even film stars must get fed up with, you know, having to be on set at 5am in order to earn their, their, their 10 million pound fee 
or maybe they don't. I don't know, but you know, that's maybe an extreme case. Anyway, having established that you, you've got to come up with at least one aspect of your work that you're not uh, mad keen on, it's essential to make sure you pick on something minor, okay? After all, you know, if there's something major you don't like about this line of work, then why are you applying for this job? Preferably, uh, you know, I hit on one or two maybe minor issues, which perhaps, you know, almost everyone in your line of work is likely to also find objectionable. So the main thrust of your answer has to be that you do, of course, very much enjoy this line of work and that any downsides are only minor. As usual, basically turn an inherently negative question around so as to give a positive reply. Downplay your dislikes so that they appear trivial and irrelevant. Now, as usual, I have plucked a little example answer from my book for you. I love this line of work, and so it's hard for me to say there are areas of it that I don't like, but there are naturally some areas I enjoy less than others. They're very minor though. For example, whilst I appreciate the importance of adhering to the requirements of all the compliance legislation, it does take up time that I would rather spend actually working with clients to find solutions to their problems. It can also be frustrating dealing with calls into staff at the banks because they rarely seem to have the knowledge or authority to resolve a situation, and this is a further waste of time that could uh, otherwise be better sent. Oh my god, I can relate to that last point there, sure. Um, now, as a good example of totally inappropriate human uh, hum hum humour, I remember um, one interviewee answered this with, um, so yeah, what, do you like, what don't you like about this line of work? Well, they answered, it's mainly the bit between Monday and Friday. Boom, boom. Yeah, okay. Now, unless you're actually applying to be a stand-up comedian, trying to be funny is generally best avoided in an interview. Now, I'm currently updating um, the interview question and answer book, working on a brand new edition, the third edition of this book. So if you have any interview questions which you think I should be considering for possible inclusion, do please let me know in the comments section below. And if I use your question, then obviously there will be a complimentary signed copy of that new edition for you. I may even throw in a free interview coaching session with me if you like, the man who literally wrote the book on interviews. Or of course, you can just pop along and book a session at jamesinness.group. So now we're not far from the end of today's show. I'll be back tomorrow, Thursday, for the final show of the week. Remember, this show is Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, each and pretty much every week. Yes, even when I'm on holiday. And just two more things I want to run through with you. First of all, um, do please check me out on social media and connect, follow or otherwise stalk me. Please don't troll me. Any questions or comments you may have about this episode, about the show in general, already about life, the universe, why time seems to pass so much more quickly in the summer than it does in the winter. Whatever. Do please let me have them in the comments section below. If you like this episode, then YouTube thumbs up maybe. Perhaps think about subscribing. And if you are subscribing, then lost my bell for a second there. Then also ring that bell so you can be notified automatically of any future episodes or any uploads that I might make. If you've already done all of that, then obviously thank you very much. Now, finally, what's happening in the next episode? In Thursday's show, I'll be looking at the week's workplace news. So I do hope you'll tune in. Thank you for watching today. Keep safe and be well, my friends. Goodbye.